Welcome to Hard Questions. This is where we gather pastors together and take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible, the Word of God. I'm Tom Hollis, the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. Weimar Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Pastor Buck Schaefer, Grace Life Church, Monroeville and North Hills. Pete Jacaloni, lead pastor, South Hills Assembly of God Church, Bethel Park, PA. J. Anthony Gilbert, pastor of Another Level in Mount Washington. Well, pastors, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to answer some of these tough questions. And today we're going we're gonna to talk about is God in hell? But first, let's start with this one. <laughs> what does it mean that God is a spirit? Pastor Jay. Well, you know, I, I believe it's talking about just the essence of his being, uh, who he is uh, as a person. You know, I always like to look at it too. You look in Genesis chapter one, where it says, let us create man in our image mm -hmm. and in our likeness. And what's amazing though, he doesn't use anything. In Genesis chapter, that's in chapter 126, in Genesis chapter two, he said, then he formed man out of the dust of the ground. And then a little bit further on, then he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life and man became a living soul. So we see there's three different distinctions there. And I believe that when he created, he created the essence of who we are. That's why when our spirit and our soul leaves, the body is dead. The Bible talks about even in James, how as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So when we break all that down, what, is, what does it mean that he's a spirit? It's the essence of who he really is. This is not us. No. This is not who we are. No. Who we are is that inner part, that eternal being that yeah. we're all created. That's why when we all die here, whether heaven or hell, we're all created eternally. Mm -hmm. we all, no matter where we go, hopefully it's redeemed. But uh, God is letting us know in this passage here in Genesis 1 by creating man that he was showing us that we're spirit beings and that that's the essence of who we are. Real quick, the let us. Yeah. Who's he talking to? Let us. Elohim actually Elohim. says. Okay. Yes. Elohim, which is the plurality name yeah. for God. So he's talking about all three, which is kind of unique when he created him. He said he created male and female mm -hmm. in that moment as well. So he, we see that there's even the three there. And it, if you add God in the middle, when you get married, you have the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, and then you have uh, the, the oneness of God. Then you have man and woman, which gives us that threefold cord that's not easily all broken, all created good, in there. So good teaching here, that's and, good. And the thing is, if, if God isn't spirit, then it, it would limit him in his omnipresence. He has to be spirit. And, and, and then it would take away the full attributes of God, the all-knowing God, the all-powerful God, the omnipresent God. So he is spirit. And, it, and I'm sure it's hard. We struggle with that, the fact that because we, we are in flesh. And yeah, we receive I mean, it. That, that, that whole spiritual realm. I mean, that, you know, Buck, what, what's your take on this? Well, the things that we're seeing are made of things that do not appear. So we are spirit beings created in his image and likeness. And as John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit. I agree with Jay, we're all spirit beings, but God is everywhere. He is a spirit. The reality is we're limited to a body. He's not. Mm -hmm. That's right. 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 Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, an interesting take that I have on it is uh, when we get to heaven, I tell people, uh, you won't see God. You'll see a manifestation of God, but you won't see God because God is a spirit. God is invisible. You know, you can't see something that's invisible. Now you may see his Shekinah pre presence. You know, you may see light, you may see glory, but you're not going to see God. And, uh, you know, people look at me kind of strange when I say that. Yeah, I'm looking at you yeah, kind of strange right now. Well, We're all I'm, at I'm at just saying, if he's a, you can't see a spirit, right? Yeah, right, right, right. How can you see well, God? But, what, right. but, when but we'll see the fullness of God in the well, spiritual realm. Uh, you'll see a manifestation of God. You know, you, you know take on bodily form or right, yeah, physical, right. tangible. Right, exactly, exactly. We'll see the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ. Yeah, right, you know, right. Isaiah right. says, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. I mean, you still got to do something with that too, you know? Would that yeah. be a theophany though? Well, just, uh, just, you know, uh, and, yeah. and then in Revelations, you got, you know, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and, you know, this is what he looked like, you know. Yeah. Well, a manifest, it was a manifestation. Right. Well, because yeah. that, when you talk about that too, you're talking about seeing Jesus right. in Revelation right. who took Fullness on bodily form. Right. Now you will see, we'll see if, Jesus. And if yeah. you've seen me, you've seen the Father too. I, I remember when he said, when, when one of our professors at Bible college said that uh, these girls that were raised in the church, you know, uh, PKs, uh, they were crying and they were going to leave Bible college over <laughs> this because, yeah, I heard that taught years and years ago. Yeah. Interesting take on that. I, I do want to ask a, a follow-up question on this. 
So when we're made in the image of God, so what does that mean? You, you brought that up, Buck, you brought that up. What, what does it mean to be made in the image of God? Well, image, likeness, dominion. I, I love what it says over there in Psalms. He says, what is man, the psalmist says, that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit as him. Yet you have made him a little lower than Elohim, the same word, God yes. himself. That's the original translation. And then you crowned him with glory, honor, dignity, and worth. So I, I think we're, we're God-like. Now, I didn't say we're gods. Yeah, right. no, no, yeah, we're we are God-like. We're like his children. We were made in his image yeah. um, to take what? To be fruitful, to multiply, to take dominion. So God created the earth in the fullness thereof and put his prized possession in it, us, made in his image and his likeness for dominion, to take authority and dominion. Of course, sin came, we know the story, but right. I think we're, we're gonna be a lot more like God than we think. Okay. God-like. Right. Well, well, the Bible says that as he is now, so, so are, are we, we in, in this earth. Come on, bro. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just right. give you a quick amen right all there. Right. So we might make that. teams here, bro. <laughs> let's let's just... move right along here to so see if we can all agree on something else here or to disagree as the case may be. Second question, if God is everywhere, oh, we all boy. agree with that, mm -hmm. is God in hell? Fuck. Wow. Well, you know, you got your opinions, but we always like to go with the word of God. So let's go to Psalms 139. And uh, yeah, that's where I went. I, I, I just, you know, where can you go from a presence of, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. So, you know, she whole, we, we can look at the different meanings. Mm -hmm. So God is everywhere, omniscience, omnipresence. Right. He's everywhere. Um, and I, I believe he knows what's going on in hell. And, uh, but you know, is he, again, that goes back to the spirit being that's everywhere because your, your fallen nature would go to hell. I think God has awareness that people are in hell, but that means this scripture is saying, Psalms 139, he's everywhere and understands that. Wow, that, uh, any, any other takes on that? Well, That's I, just I, an I, unusual I, question, but yeah. If, he, I can, if I can quote Dr. Glaze here, uh, I, I believe because he's spirit, we can't say he's not in hell, but is his manifestation presence, presence in hell? There's why I would say presence. no, his manifestation presence, no, definitely not in hell. Well, he is and the psalmist omnipresent, present, right? right? Means he's all oh, present right. in all places. But, and because again, Solomon, at, when he dedicated the temple, said, the heavens of the heavens cannot contain you. Uh, the, everywhere cannot, even hell. But, but that brings up a good question because uh, just thinking about it, where can I go from your presence? presence right. Yeah. So, and, and, and again, his presence is not in hell. That's void of God, right? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Well, there's two yeah. words for that too. As I did some research on it, I, I should have wrote them down, but there's two words for presence too. Okay. There's a presence where there's like an intimate, I'm here with you. And then there's the presence of him as far as that he's everywhere. Yeah. So, so what's so, like the manifest presence? That's what I'm him. saying. Yeah, yeah, for example, like God is with right. us here. Like that's why there can be a people in church and God can be there. One person can have an experience, another person can't. He's there, but they right. feel nothing. The other person has this thing yeah. that is so intimate with him. And so he has that ability because he's spirit to be able to do both. Yeah. He can he can be everywhere, but not be intimate with everyone. He's got to it's be. It's funny how we can't the, talk about this without going <laughs> like this. You know? yeah, yeah. He's everywhere, but you know, it's, but it's true. Pastor Clay. Well, you know, to me, I think the key is relationship. Yeah. That his his presence is uh, in Sheol or hell, but the people there don't have a relationship That's with right. him. Yeah. Uh, whereas we do, you know, and uh, you know, so I, I would say that that would be the big difference you know, as far as his presence is concerned, that, that there's, you know, like, like for us, we have a relationship and he comforts us in the relationship. You know, he speaks peace to us in the relationship, but in hell, his presence is not going to comfort anybody. Right. It's not going right. to speak peace to he's, anybody. He's still God of, of, of right. that. He still yeah. reigns supreme. Well, well, no, no, just one quick thing. When you said that, something came to my mind in Genesis. God was everywhere, right. but he asked Adam, where are you? Yeah. So yeah. why would God ask him that question? Because yeah. something, that relationship was broken. So God can be everywhere in spirit. That doesn't mean you have access to him. That's right. I mean, it's all back to that relationship right. thing, yeah. isn't it? That we are relating to God and that when, when, when that's broken or when that's cut off, like in hell, 
there's no manifest presence again of God. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. We're going to find out That's more good. when we get to heaven, but <laughs> we're going to find tuned. out if we can see him or not. Oh my goodness. I got to think <laughs> about that one. All right. Well, coming back in just 60 <laughs> seconds when we ask what makes Christianity unique from other religions. We'll be right back. Christ, yes, right. Christ model. I'll tell you what, you, you should be here when the commercial <laughs> comes on because we have some really good conversations in the break. Well, I want to get to some more good uh, questions here, good con conversation, a good discussion about the Word of God. And uh, the third one is this What is the immutability Ooh. of God mm. and why this. is it important? Jump. Pastor Bill. Well, uh, the immutability of God is the fact that he doesn't change. In Malachi, he said, I am God, I change not. Uh, in Hebrews, it says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why is that important? Uh, the reason that it's important is because if God could change, that means that he's not perfect. Right. That, you know, if he could change for the better, then that means who he is right now is not, he's not the intimate, I mean, the infinite ultimate being. If he could change for the worse, then you know that you know that that takes away from who he is. So you know, to me, I think the reason that it's important that God is immutable is because he is infinite in time, he is infinite in space, he is infinite in eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God, and uh, if if he could change, then that means that uh, either he he's not all that he should be right now, or that he could be better than than what he is. So. It's not a word we use very much, immutable, immutable. but that's what, what it means, Pete. He doesn't change. He even said, I change not. He, he declared that, that I am a God that does not change. And, and what, what else would I love about this is the fact that not only is he not immutable, but his word isn't. Every one of his promises, Jay, are guaranteed as long as we live. That's right. He's a God that changes not. He doesn't change. What's that, what's that mean to you, Buck? What? You know, James 1, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above, whom there isn't even a shadow of turning in Him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a good God, and He never changes. So we're on He's the right good. team. <laughs> <laughs> He's still good. It's a comfort to that's us, right? right? Yep. And also that means that to your point, that's why they, when they cried out, holy, 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 what are your things that he never changes? Yeah. When you're holy, it means no matter how much pressure is put on you, you don't shift. The problem with us, if enough pressure gets applied, what comes out of us is Ooh. changes. With him, no matter how much right. pressure gets on him, around him, in him, through him, doesn't matter what it is, he's still the same no matter what. And that's how you can always tell when you've become holier than you were or sanctified is that the same pressure that hits you once before, you don't shift in your character because now that holiness has been perfected within you. So the fact that he's immutable, it doesn't matter what comes on him, he remains the he remains same, which is what we cannot do. And that's a comfort as we draw close to him, we are changed, right. that he remains the same. Great question. Well, we wanna to go to, I think what we'll probably have a lot of discussion on, what makes Christianity unique from other religions, Pastor All Pete. Right. Well, when, I, when I think of other religions, I think of uh, you know uh, other religions as far as uh, that you're saved by the things that you do. Right. Uh, what makes Christianity unique? Uh, all other religions, you're saved according to what you do. It's a fact that in Christianity, we are saved by His finished work on the cross. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through ten. For by grace, and we don't understand this. I mean, we can wrestle this. We can talk about what grace is. But it says, by grace have you been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. And, and again, we live, our whole being deals with meriting. We merit this, we merit that, we earn this, we earn that. And then when it comes time for salvation, and, and I've had people, you know, challenge me. Uh, we say a simple prayer, be merciful to me, Lord, a sinner. And you're saved? Just on something like that. And we are. The moment that simplistic Lord be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe immediately the grace and the mercies of God take place. Regardless if that person's struggling with drugs, yada, yada, yada. They're immediately saved. So that's what makes Christianity different. We're saved by grace. Our works. Now we're saved to do good works as we are discipled. And, but that doesn't take place overnight. Yeah. 
Okay, very good point. We're saved not by what we do, but by his grace. Pastor I agree 100%, man, by grace we're saved, but I think the resurrection stands us apart from every other religion. Yeah, oh, yes. Um, and you know, for, for Paul to say, if the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead quickens. dwells in us, it quickens our mortal body. You don't hear that in, in, in Buddhism. You, if you go into those shrines over there, if you go into the mosques over there, it's a very somber, it's a very, it's a, it's a beating you down, it's heavy, heavy works, but you know, you know, Paul tells us if the resurrection didn't happen, everything mm -hmm. we preach is in vain. Yeah. So the reality is I've heard no other religion that has a resurrected savior that's alive and well, Good. told Good. us Good. be filled with the Holy Ghost and go do what I asked you to do, he's risen. So I think that sets us apart from everything else. Absolutely. And I think every other religion is fear-based, ours is love-based. Okay. There's no other one. It, it's the only religion that celebrates the death of its martyr and resurrection. There's no other religion that celebrates its death. We are like Good Friday. There's no, when, when Buddha died, no one's like, man, we celebrate Buddha because he's dead. He gone, he ain't coming back guys. <laughs> right. You know, that's it. Jesus, right. we celebrate the death of our founder. And it's the only religion where the creator dies for a fallen creation. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different, and it's, and, and all of that, it's encompassed in love. Every other one, like you mentioned, it's all beat down, like, I've got to do right. I've got to do this. That's why those martyrs, or not, I want to call them martyrs, but suicide uh, kamikazes flew into yeah. uh, those buildings. They were thinking, this merge. is the way I can get to heaven and appease the wrath of a God. Ours was done by his son. I mean, so there's so much that you can go into that makes us different. Everything about it is different from every other religion, except for one thing. We all have a sin problem, and we're all trying to figure out how to get it fixed. <laughs> That's right, Pastor Glaze. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, Jay just now said it. You know, we acknowledge the sinfulness of human beings, but we also note that an antidote has been provided for sin. And so people spend their lives trying to atone for their sin, right. whether it's standing on the corner handing out Wake and Watchtower mag uh, magazines, whether it's standing right. on the corner promoting uh, the big lie, selling bean pies and uh, wearing a bow tie. You know, uh, you know the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, it's so easy, Christianity is so easy that a caveman can do it, yeah. right? I mean, you know. Just all, like Geico. Uh, right, right, right. All, all, the, all the other religions leave me guessing if I've yeah. done enough. Yeah. Yeah. Christianity, you know, other religions say do, do, do. Christianity says done. You know, and so when you look at it, it takes the guesswork out of it. You know, again, if you ex accept the grace of God by faith, you are saved. And, and so, you know, I, I, that's the part of it. I, I think that distinguishes Christianity from other religions. Powerful. Uh, you know, Powerful. It, it, it really, wow. it, it seems to me that the, the better way that this question could be phrased is what is the difference between Christianity and religion? And what, what, what else is there that has the blood of the lamb? That, that doesn't mm -hmm. just cover sins, but takes them away and then makes you righteous. New creature. Makes yeah. you to look just like Jesus, yeah. the firstborn wow. amongst many brethren. That's powerful. Yeah. The yeah. blood just washes away. So wow. uh, the whole blood has that, the whole Bible has that blood flowing through everything. It's powerful. And, and that's that, the reason that's why years ago. Us. Okay, yes, and that's the reason why years ago, evangelicals were known as a slaughterhouse religion right. because without the blood, we don't have it. It's nothing, got- Nothing without we, the blood. Right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. What can make me whole again? And we've alluded to this here, but it bears saying again, every other religion is about what we can do to reach God. That's and right. I, you know, right. you've seen that, that little thing where there's a cliff over here with a guy on it, and God's over here, and how can he get over there? And he can try philosophy, he can try good works, he right. can try religion, he can try all manner of different things. And none of that will reach across there, but the cross of Christ Jesus. reaches Come across on. there. Come the on. cross of Christ yeah. is the thing that, that, that we can, by, by no, no expertise of our own, but by his death. You, you alluded to it, which I think is really important. It's the death of our founder. Yes. The death, it's not, the, it's not, the life was wonderful, but it's the death and resurrection of our yeah. founder that by how we're made righteous. What I think is really unique too, and we do communion, it doesn't celebrate the resurrection. You do commemorate the Lord's death. death. Yeah. It's the only religion that celebrates the death of its founder. Right. Yeah. So I mean, there are some unique things, and, and you know, maybe it, it bears uh, taking a moment here that if you've never 
made that commitment. Yes. Amen. If, if, if you realize that there's sin, you know, everybody realizes there's a sin, sin separating them between what they should be and what they are. And you know what? We can't get through that barrier of sin. We can't do that. But God himself came and broke through yes. there for you that you can know him. And all you need to do is invite him into your life, yes. open that door of your heart and say, uh, you know, God be merciful to me, a sinner, as Pete just said. In other words, God, come into my life, be my Savior and Lord. If you surrender to him today, Amen. you'll know what we're talking about, Amen. about celebrating his life, death, and resurrection. Well, coming up in just 60 seconds, the hotline question of the week. Welcome back to Hard Questions. You know, we love taking your questions on our Hard Questions hotline. So uh, let's listen to this one. If you have pictures of Jesus around your house and you talk to that picture in prayer, pray, is that okay to do? Okay. All right. This is a little, little bit different mm -hmm. for me. A little, it seems a little strange at the praying to pictures of Jesus. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, pick on the ex-Catholic boy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the Sicilian that, you know, um, I, I think God takes this very seriously when he talks about having no images and uh, false idols and images. Uh, again, guys, I, I grew up in a, and I'm not attacking, but I grew up in a, in a situation where uh, all of these images were throughout our house. Um, I think if we go back to a question that was asked a little while ago, God is spirit. And I, I think if we limit or even begin to see these pictures as our relationship with God, I think we'll, we'll be limiting ourselves. I think we'll be limiting the power and the presence of God. And I, and I think that we'll, we'll, we'll say that the presence of God will eventually come to places only when I'm at home looking at these pictures that, that we don't have his presence with us in the car, when we're in an airplane, when we're in the mall. Um, and I think, there's, I think there's danger to that. I really believe there's danger to that. And Absolutely. that's the reason why I would highly encourage you, ma'am, please take the pictures down um, because it, it seems like if you're talking to them now, they, they've got some so there's not something wrong with the picture so right. much as the praying to it. There you go. Substituting it for that relationship with God. Fuck. You know, as you travel to different nations, I've done a lot of work in Russia, and it just caught me weird yes. that the Russian Orthodox Church, and, and they would, you know, in Rome, they'd kiss those icons, okay. and they'd kiss. If you go back to the history of that, you find out that when Martin Luther... Uh, nailed those 95 theses to the door of that chapel. It was the just shall live by faith. And you found out the day after they piled relics and pictures yeah. and all kinds of stacks of stuff up there because that's what people were doing. And the root of that was kind of like, you know, like modern day people would do here, get this, God's in this. And, and I think what they do is they take out of the New Testament where, hey, a, a handkerchief or a cloth that Paul had said, go let's lay, on, lay this on someone. It was, it, it was their faith that, that brought God's healing power, not a relic, not a this or that, the other. And I think what people have done is they tried to actually try to profit from selling stuff in Rome that really, if you look at the Roman Catholic Church and it was go do this, go do this. And all of a sudden that became into a form of godliness with no power. And now people want this and they still do it well, all over the it's world. It's the form rather than the substance yeah. right. of it. Yeah. With no power. Well, you know, one of the things I take a look at as we're talking is um, if I'm sitting here with you mm -hmm. right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking, I believe you're alive and well. Thank and you. you're right there, right? And I'm talking to your picture. You're alive. You're in the room with me. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm talking to a physical picture of you and it limits the spiritual relationship and revelatory power that the believer has. Right. I think sometimes we underestimate the power of revelation, the revelation of God. God's like, no, no, don't put me at that little picture right there. That ain't me. I'm right here and I can be anything right. you need and you can be limiting Right. The revelation, revelation of God that he wants to give to you by limiting it to a picture here saying, this is him. And I, I couldn't imagine talking to my wife saying, oh, you look so beautiful, babe. And I'm, she's like, wait, I'm right here. Yeah, but I'm looking at the picture. He's with you in the room. He's with you wherever you are. You don't need all of those things. He wants to be more alive to you than that picture well, is that you're holding is in your hand. Is it any different from a golden calf? 
Not much. Uh, it, you know, that, that much. It gets it, to it. it. I mean, the whole, the serpent that Moses right. had lifted up in the wilderness had to be destroyed because people were praying to it. Now, again, I don't want to be too hard on the lady here. She's praying to Jesus. No. She just happened to be looking at the picture, but don't separate, yeah. you know. Well, you know, I, I have a different take. You guys probably will throw tomatoes at me when no I say way. this. No way, no uh, way. No, but I, I, you know, I, I deal with a lot of brothers in the hood. And one of the reasons that they reject Christianity is because they say, how can you worship a white Jesus? Mm. And, and, and so what, they, what, what they're condemning is the fact that in America, Jesus has been, and, and Jay, you probably run into this. Mm -hmm. He's been mm -hmm. portrayed mm -hmm. as a, a blue eyed, blonde right. hair. So, you know, even to have an image right. of Jesus, you know, that's going to be what you, how you see him. Mm -hmm. And that's not how he really is. Mm -hmm. Now I'm agreeing with, all, with everything else that's been said that, you know, as far as the worshiping part, but I'm just saying, even as far as your conceptualization of Jesus, that, you know, in Africa, he's going to be conceptualized different Right, he's gonna have an afro and uh, some you know, he's gonna be holding the. the, the, <laughs> the well, that's, that's, that's really a good point. No, it's, uh, it's a powerful that we point. Need, we, yeah, we I need like, to remember what we need to see God as He is in the Scripture, in the revelation right. of His it's presence spirit. in us, not necessarily in a picture. So that's a very good question. Well, we like to end the program with Scripture, and today we are going to go to Isaiah 44, 6, where it says, this is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and the last. Apart from me, there is no God. We hope you enjoyed today's program. We want to hear from you. Please email us your questions at hardquestions at ctvn.org.